What's up guys, this is Ash Snarks. Holiday Euphine got buffed and I'm going to showcase her. Guys, she has 15 skill ups and the way she is now is actually much better than she used to be because you can actually use her as a support and she helps a ton. So the way I have her built is a pretty high stability, high health, some defense, she's got high evasion. So that's real cool, that's why I'm using the Guildwar a guide to a decision artifact which helps a lot with her ability also it can push her combat units when the enemy tries to attack her if the barrier stays there and if she evades she's gonna take very little damage which means the barrier is gonna stay there and the way i have her built is a pretty decent amount of uh, attack but it's mostly about having enough speed so she goes first in my team removes up to two debuffs you know that is a big deal puts attack buff on the whole team Push combat units by 20%. You can soul burn, uh, soul burn the skill so you can reduce the cooldown by two turns. So that is very good. So you can have a higher uptime on it. It's such a powerful skill number three. But that's not only it. What she does, right? So now, if you had like an able to buff debuff, um, if, if like your team got silenced or something like that, maybe she didn't get silenced, right? Uh, I mean, you could maybe build effect resistance on her if you want that cleanse to be super reliable. Let's say, like, Angel of Light Angelica. No, it's not an attack, so evasion will not be helping uh, Holiday Euphine. But, uh, yeah. So the whole team has attack buff. And now her passive makes it so your whole team takes 50% uh, less combat units pushback. So if, like... Uh, an enemy wanted to push back the combatness of your whole team by 50%. Well, they're gonna get reduced by 25% instead, assuming it actually doesn't get resisted, right? Uh, maybe all the Euphine actually uh, evades the attack. So when she's at full health now, she has 70% uh, evasion. It's the same as before, but when she's not at maximum health, she still has 35% evasion. So this is a massive increase in survivability and you're going to be seeing throughout the battles the enemy missing on her and of course if they miss on her it helps her to keep the barrier up. You could have you know heroes in the team that allow her to maybe get a barrier throughout the battle so maybe uh, the artifact guide of, uh, to the decision from Guild War like might help her to push herself more often throughout the battle. Now. Uh, the soul burn is is very strong you know minus two turn cooldown on s3 very very strong stuff i mean that's what i like to see you want to put some buffs on the team cool cool but you need to remove uh, those stupid debuffs right because what's the point of trying to put some buffs if you're not taking care of the debuffs uh, debuff before actually trying to put a buff some heroes they put a buff up and then they cleanse uh, the team which doesn't make sense there's a lot of heroes in the meta, you know, debuffs, debuffs, debuffs. At least, at least you got Holiday Euphine now. It, it's two debuffs, right? It's not like an uh, unlimited amount that she removes. But still, that is strong. And now we got an attack buffer on a 108 base speed that actually has good survivability. That actually has a passive that helps the team, right? To not get the CR pushback that much. She can assist with damage, landing, burn, and you can pair her with a hero like Carrot, right? So the burns that she lands, uh, Carrot is going to be able to detonate those burns. You can just stack the burns, right? And uh, that's cool. Uh, that, that's a fun thing to do. Uh, I would, well, recommend that you do that versus a team that has one earth or more. You know, you're not going to go in there with double fire versus uh, one ice or more heroes. But uh, the damage stacks up. It's cool because uh, Carrot gets attack buff now, and if she gets debuff, like she can take care of that. How do you feel? So I like the way she is now. Now she did get nerfed in terms of like raw burn damage because she used to get greater attack buff on herself, which means well she ended up having more attack, and the burn would be no deton. Oh, well, well it would be burning for more, right? But now that's not the case. They shifted her to become more of a support hero. And she does well uh, with her new role. And I definitely like it. I definitely like it. I mean, uh, you could have her own artifact. You could be stunning with her. Like, you don't need to use that uh, Guild War artifact that I'm using. Um, so, that's good, right? 
So I'm enjoying using this hero and I feel like we're getting ML Domino about to be released, right? And ML Domino, uh, she does have a higher base speed. I believe it's 114. So yeah, she wins at that department. If you're trying to get as much speed as possible with a hero to push your whole team's combat, you just put a tag buff on your team, then she's going to win there. We got Rose already, like OG Rose. I mean, she's been in the game since the start. Puts attack buff, you know, pushes combat shitness of your team. It's 25%, I believe. She's got exclusive equipments. She can boost her, uh, her speed. Not her base speed, but on top of her base speed, like having equipment, right? Goes up to 10 more speed. So I believe her base speed is 98. With that EE, it's 100 and uh, 8 but uh, the ee doesn't get scaled with speed buff uh, sorry the speed set so how do you fine wins there now do you want to go and put maximum speed on her well there's reasons why it's not a good idea right uh well a few reasons actually so you're not gonna be able to outspeed 128 129 base speed heroes right like that is not happening uh ran para like she's and you don't want her to do that, right? You kind of want them to actually land their debuff. So actually, she she goes. She's like a mid-speed type of hero. You can build some survivability on her. You can pair her with heroes that might be on counter. Maybe they're like really tanky. Um, and you're able to take some damage. So like a turn two, but not versus like a team that has super crazy offense against you. Because you, you might not be stacking like Orius defense buff and all that, or you might not be able to put defense buff on your team fast enough. But when you have her with a bunch of bruisers, let's say, it, it seems to be working pretty well because by herself, she can survive pretty well, right? Uh, she's got the CR push, which is helping your bruisers to, to get their turn faster. And she's, you know, she's removing debuffs from them before doing that. So a lot of stuff is happening on that S3. Uh, it, it's very good. I like it. I like it. And now, Fine, I feel like I'm going to have to actually pull for her finally on multiple accounts. And I'm going to have to actually build her on multiple accounts because she's very impactful. And, okay, some drawbacks, right? Using this hero. She keeps attacking everyone. Skill 3, skill 1, attacks everyone. Unless you have her on, like, a counter set or she gets caught into a dual attack, she's just going to attack one hero. And by the way, her skill 1 is at elemental advantage. So th that's something to keep in mind, right? Um, she has imprint of attack percentage for herself. And for the team, I think it's health percentage. So yeah, I'd like to hear what you guys think about her buffed up version. I, I feel like she's really effective. She's much better now. Unless you're trying to really push the burn damage on her, which was not good way to actually play her anyways you can check my old video my old showcases there's a lot of counters and when you're attacking everyone constantly you're taking a lot of damage but at least she's got that evasion which is good so build some survivability on her and support your team with her let us know what you guys think about her in the comment section that's it for this one i'm ashnox good luck with all you do peace out for now